Good morning. On this, the fifth Sunday of Lent, we are still in quarantine, so we are here together saying morning prayer, which is found in the Book of Common Prayer. The service begins on page 79. Then we'll go to our confession. Uh, I'm sorry, 75. Then we'll go to our confession on page 79. Sorry, this is my first day with my new lips. And then we'll have Psalm 130 on page 784 of the Book of Common Prayer. And after our two readings, we'll say first Canticle 14, then after the Gospel, Canticle 16. Our choir director, Jeannie Fuller, is our cantor this morning. Our pianist is Ron Lewis, our organist. And our reader this morning is Crystal Knowles. And Beth Canaday, our youth and family minister, is uh, presiding at our liturgy. So let us begin by singing our opening hymn. morning prayer for the season of Lent begins on page 76. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. On page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our, our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
and on page 81. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. The Jubilate is on page 82. We will say this together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed is Psalm 130, found on page 784 of the Book of Common Prayer. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem, redeem Israel from all their sins. We'll read the epistle, Romans 8, 6 through 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit, of, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. We will now recite Canticle 14 on page 90. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heaven and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power, but your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish us as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. 
for the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. The Gospel reading comes from John 11, 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who, appointed, who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because they see, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had not been speaking about his death. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met with him, while Mary stayed home. Jesus, Mary said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in this house, consoling her, who were with her in the house, consoling her, and saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who, had, who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep, so the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you would always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he, when he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now say the song of Zechariah, um, which is Canticle 16 on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all who hate us, he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God, to the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us recite the Apostles' Creed together, which is found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, suffrage A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And the collect for the day, if you want to follow along in your Book of Common Prayer, is on page 219, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affliction of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Back to page 98. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. May I speak in the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So, if there is anything good about this quarantine and the virus, I would say that it is all of the crazy videos that I've seen my friends post on Facebook, especially videos of people singing. There is a friend of ours in town named Trevor, and he's been seemingly posting a daily show tunes number from different places in his house, and it's been a lot of fun to see him. So I had this wonderful idea, because this past week, uh, Kenny Rogers died. And the first concert I went to in 1984, I think it was 84, was the Gambler Tour at the Maybe Center in Tulsa, And we went and we saw Kenny Rogers perform, you know, like We've Got Tonight with Sheena Easton, all of those great songs. And he died uh, this past week. And it made me sad because I was thinking about my mom and my aunts and all of the family members of a certain generation who that was their favorite artist. And it actually made me cry. I was listening to uh, one of Kenny Rogers' songs. um, Gosh, Love Lifted Me, that he recorded. And it brought me to tears because we're in the middle of this virus. We're in a quarantine. We don't know what's going to happen. And I had this great idea that I would get in a blue suit and dye my beard red And I took the words to the song, Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town, and I rewrote them, Ruby, Don't Take That COVID to Town. And then at the end, I say, but if you're going, can you pick me up some quilted northern? Which I think was a good line. My wife talked me out of recording this, spending all day one day doing it and posting it on Facebook. But if enough of you share this video today of our worship service with your friends, I will record that song and post it on my wall. I won't embarrass the church that badly. So this morning we hear Jesus say something interesting. And I just want to read a few scriptures from the New Testament, and I hope that you will uh, take them in. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness, 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. But we do see him, Hebrews 2.9, who was made a little lower, for a while a little lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of the suffering and death, crowned with glory and honor. Galatians 4.4, 4, but when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Mark 6.3, and the villagers murmured to themselves, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. John 4, 6, and Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, being wearied from his journey, was sitting by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Jesus wept. We, all, we will have a trouble understanding our gospel this morning if we don't accept the humanity of Jesus. In this past week, as I've thought about this sermon, I've, I've read a few commentary, and I've read questions over and over again of people who are confused because they would say things like, why did it say Jesus was deeply troubled when he knew what he was going to do? And it's really the same question that the people in the gospel reading are asking when they say, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? It's really the same question that all of us are asking in the middle of this virus. God, why don't you do something? A lot of us join, hopefully all of us join with Pope Francis last week in praying the Lord's Prayer at noon, asking God to do something. It's a reasonable question. But we really need to understand who Jesus is and who he was. I've said this before to our church at Emmanuel, but it needs to be said over and over and over. And we need to constantly wrestle with this ancient Christian idea that Jesus is fully human and fully divine. And I think we're okay with the divine part of him because we like Thor, and we like Hercules, and we like these superheroes, and we think we understand being other than us. But that human thing mixed with the divine bothers us. And that's okay for us to wrestle with it, because for God to be God, God has to be beyond our comprehension. And if you're like me, you grew up with this view of Jesus as Superman. He isn't limited by the things that limit us. He can walk on water. He can calm the storm. He can feed the 5,000. He can heal the sick. He can cast out demons. Or like in our gospel reading this morning, he can raise the dead to life. But that view, when it's overly emphasized, ignores all the passages that I just read when I, as I began my sermon this morning. It's true that there are these moments of glory when it feels like God is with us, and that's the name of this church, Emmanuel, God with us. But if we don't understand that Jesus was also tired and cold and confused and worried and afraid, and he had morning breath and he was hungry and he smelled bad and he passed gas when he didn't mean to, and he tripped and fell and was embarrassed. He went through all of the things that we go through. He wasn't Superman or Hercules or Thor. And he also wasn't just like Martin Luther King or Gandhi, just a great human teacher, because we could understand that in, as well. And the early Christians had to come up with a term for this. It was similar to other terms they had heard, but it's called incarnation. And it's what the whole Nicene Creed was about when they debated it for 70 years. Jesus, being fully human and fully divine, is not in the realm of our understanding, our comprehension. 
So our job is just simply to enter in to this mystery, the mystery of a suffering Savior, a suffering God. We'll see this suffering at the cross, but we also saw it this morning in this long reading that Crystal read for us. We see Jesus, Mary is kneeling before him, and Mary says to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And this might be the most pleading moment in all of the Gospels. Because I, this past week, have joined with Mary, and all of us have at different times in our lives when we have said, if only. If only they had worn a seatbelt. If only I had tried harder. If only I had said I love you before they left. If only I hadn't walked out. Like Mary in our gospel reading, we come to Jesus and we say, if only you had been here. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly de- greatly disturbed, deeply moved, and he said, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. And then the scripture says, Jesus wept. Our fully human Savior is weeping with his friends. Even though he knows what he intends to do, even though he trusts God to answer his prayer, he's weeping. In fact, we learn in the next chapter that Lazarus is going to have to die again. Really, it's pretty unlucky for Lazarus. He's the only guy who had to die twice. And he's marked for death, the next passage tells us. So, what do we do? What do we do when we're feeling alone, like the man in Kenny Rogers' song, desperately sad, desperately alone, hoping someone will stay with us? The good news is, God will. He's been through what we've been through. He's seen sickness, and he's seen death, and he's gone through it himself and come out the other side. This is our Christian hope. May we hold on to it as we go through the left rest of Lent, as we go through this quarantine, as we wait in faith for light to shine. Next week is Palm Sunday. Normally we would gather together and we'd bless these palms and we would prepare to march around together, but we'll be in quarantine. So I have the palms here on this table and I'm going to bless them. If you're a member of our parish, you'll get them in the mail this week. So you can hold them while you watch our Palm Sunday video next week, or you can walk around your block and get your exercising, waving your palms and shouting Hosanna if you want. It's okay, but that will be next Sunday. Um, I invite you to spray Lysol on these. When you open the letter, just be careful. But let's bless our palms, and then let's um, finish our morning prayer service And our hymn, After I Bless These Palms, is hymn 495. God, we ask that you bless these palms in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We ask that despite our circumstances, that you somehow fill us with the joy of the presence of your Son. May next Sunday, even as we acknowledge his death and his suffering, may we somehow say, Hosanna.
morning prayer continues on page 101. I invite you to um, add your intercessions and thanksgivings. I would like to pray for our healthcare workers here at Emmanuel, Ron Lewis, Tracy Mason, Greg Grant, Ivana Johnson, Levi Jones, Merle Davis, Dirk Ingalls, Paul Jennings, Alexis Dahlman, Karen Murphy, and all of their families. And in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's in Oklahoma City. Now let us say together the great thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. To us and to all whom you have made, we bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Page 102. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Jesus Christ forever and ever.
Thank you for gathering us for worship this morning on behalf of Emmanuel Episcopal Church. I'm Tom Dahlman, the priest here, and I offer a greeting to Elizabeth Davis and the Episcopal Churches in Seminole and Holdenville, who are also gathered with us this morning. We hope that you have a good week, a better week than last week. Amen. <laughs> 